Eat out of the Gospel of John, chapter 5, from verse 31. For the visitors who are with us this morning, we are busy with a study out of the Gospel of John. We have started last year, and uh, we are with chapter 5, and I'm going to read from verse 31 up to verse 47, the end of the chapter. Before we read, let us pray. Lord, we ask you to speak to us, to open our hearts and our minds, and we know that is only possible through the work of the Holy Spirit. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. From verse 31, If I testify about myself, my testimony is not valid. There is another who testifies in my favor, and I know that his testimony about me is valid. You have sent to John, and he has testified to the truth. Not that I accept human testimony, but I mention it that you may be saved. John was a lamb that burned and gave light, and you choose for a time to enjoy his light. I have testimony weightier than that of John, for the very work that the Father has given me to finish, and which I am doing, testify that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified concerning me. You have never heard his voice, nor seen his form, nor does his word dwell in you, for you do not believe the one he sent. You diligently study the scripture, because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept praise from men, but I know you. I know that you do not have the love of God in your hearts. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. But if someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe if you accept praise from one another? Yet make no effort to obtain the praise that comes from the only God. But do not think I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom your hopes are set. If you believe Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But since you do not believe what he wrote, how are you going to believe what I say? So far, the reading out of God's word. A little bit of the background. We have seen that the disciple John, Apostle John, he wrote the gospel so that people might believe that Jesus is the Christ and by believing might have eternal life. So that is the purpose why he wrote the gospel. And we have seen in the chapter so far, that John is calling people and he's writing about people that testify about Christ. And Jesus has started with some miracles by which he has shown that he is indeed the one sent by God. And in this chapter, in the beginning of this chapter, we have seen that he has healed a layman. But he did it on a Sabbath day. And he did it purposefully. And the people reacted against that because they said that he had sinned against the laws by breaking the Sabbath, by healing someone on the Sabbath day. And Jesus responded and he used the opportunity to speak to the people and to tell them who he really is. That he's the Son of God. And he's calling people to testify. In this few verses we have read, we see he's calling John the Baptist to testify. He's calling the Father to testify. He's calling the Scriptures to testify. He's calling his works and his words to testify. And in this day, we remember the coming of the Holy Spirit. And in John, we also read that the Spirit came for a specific purpose to testify about Christ, that He is indeed the Son of God. But the people reacted 
in a very bad way. And that has always been in the history of Israel. It is so tragic. But it's almost a theme in the Old Testament. But God loved His people. He loved the nation of Israel. The people He chose to be His own. But they repeatedly showed unthankfulness and unfaithfulness towards Him. He delivered them. He cared for them in the wilderness. He brought them to the promised land. But very soon, they turned their back upon Him and participated in idolatry. They served other gods. And that has been like that through all the centuries. Sometimes it, it was getting worse. Sometimes there were times of repentance and genuine repentance and refreshments. But the continual theme is that they did not serve God wholeheartedly. But always there was a remnant. There was always, amidst this apostasy, a few believers left every time. And in this gospel so far, John has also mentioned a few of them. The disciples, the Samaritans who came to repentance, the royal official and his household. But many of the Jews, they acted in a very hostile way towards Jesus. They confronted him. They actually hated him. And now Jesus is defending the fact that he is the Son of Man. He is the Son of God. And he's calling witnesses. And the first witness he's calling is John the Baptist. And he told the Jews, he said to them, You have sent to John. And he has testified to the truth. He told them, you sent a delegation to John to find out who he was and what was he preaching about. And the ministry of John the Baptist was to prepare the nation for the coming of the Messiah. And he cried out to them, and when he saw Jesus, he said, there is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He cried out. He says, I, I'm only the voice in the wilderness. I'm not worthy even to untie the sandals of the Lord Jesus. He's the Son of God. He acknowledged that Jesus is indeed the Messiah. And Jesus testified of John as well. He said, John is, was the Lamb that was burning and shining. And the Jews, they rejoiced over John the Baptist because there was almost 400 years of silence of no prophet in the times of the Jews before the coming of Jesus and his birth. And he was a light for the people. And like insects are drawn by a light and a lamb, so the people was drawn to John the Baptist but ultimately, they turned away from that light as well because he commanded from them and asked from them to repentance. And they did not like that. In the end, he was beheaded. But Jesus said, that is the witness, John the Baptist. But I, I don't need that human uh, testimony. Another testimony, he said, is... In verse 36, but the testimony that I have is greater than that of John. For the works that the Father has given me to accomplish, the very works I'm doing bear witness about me that the Father has sent me. But Jesus tells them, the works I'm doing, the miracles, but also his very words he spoke was a testimony that he was from God. And even one of the leaders of the Jews, Nicodemus, he confessed. He said, Rabbi, we know that you come from God as a teacher, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And I acknowledge, he said, nobody can do what you are doing unless God is with him. Jesus also in his high priestly prayer said, I have accomplished the work which you have given me. Even his enemies acknowledged that what he did was supernatural and was from God. 
He said there's another witness, and that is the Father's witness. There's another who testifies, he sees, and I know that the testimony which he gives about me is true. There were two occasions at his baptism and the transfiguration, where a voice from heaven came, and the Father said to Jesus and those around him, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved Son, that the Father witnessed, and tells the people, This is His Son, listen to Him. But Jesus said, you have never listened to that voice, he said to the Jews. He rebuked them. They remained unbelievers. They refused to listen. Those who don't love God, they refuse to listen. We read in 1 John chapter 5 of the internal witness that is in every Christian, every believer. He said, if we receive the testimony of men... The testimony of God is greater. For the testimony of God is this, that He has testified concerning His Son. And He said, that testimony is within us. The Holy Spirit works that. So John the Baptist testified. The works of Jesus testified. And the Father testified. And He said, The Bible testifies as well. The Scriptures. He said, you search the Scripture because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is these that testifies, testify about me. He tells them, you as Jews, you make such an effort to study the Bible. The Old Testament Scriptures in those days. You study them. They spend day and night reading, studying the Bible. Every word, every letter. But they never acted upon it. They read the Bible. They studied it. But it helped them nothing. As the English theologian in the 10th century said, Happy is he who reads the scripture if he converts the words into actions. Many times people can read the Bible. You can even read it in the church. People can preach the word of God. He can teach the Bible. But it can mean nothing to you. It can be a dead book. It means nothing unless the Spirit gives life to it. And in, the, in this case, it was like that with the Pharisees. They fanatically studied the Bible, but it helped them nothing. They didn't have the the transformation and the work of the Holy Spirit within them. In 2 Corinthians 3 verse 6 we read, Paul says, Who has made us sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant, not the letter, but the Spirit, for the letter kills that the Spirit gives life. The reason why so many people study the Bible, go to sermons, it means nothing to them. It's a dead letter. It makes them actually aggressive towards the things of God. It's because it's only the letter. It's the Spirit must give life. He alone can restore you. We live in a, can only live in a dependence upon the Spirit to bring us life. That's why He came on Pentecost Day. And from that day the church was born. He came to give life, to give understanding when we understand the Bible. The Jews had festivals, they had Sabbath days, they had new moons. They did all that with the reading of the Bible, but it didn't help them. We read in Colossians 2 verse 16, These are shadows of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. So many in churches, they can't be so busy with their ceremonies. With festivals. But Paul says it's shadows. It's only the shadow. The substance is Christ. Jesus said you read the scriptures, but you don't come to me. You know a lot about the Bible. You're every day, every Sunday in church. But you don't come to me. 
To be a Christian is to come to Christ, the living Savior, to be restored by the Holy Spirit, to be given life by Him. That's the Christian faith. That's the Christian faith. We are in need, in desperate need of the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, and He hated religion without life. He said, the people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. I teach the doctrines of men, but it's vain, he says. He says, vain. We must serve God with all our heart. We must love Him for that purpose, for who He is, coming to Christ. That's what the Spirit wants to do. He testifies about Christ. We see one, another reason, Jesus said, why people don't become believers. In verse 20, 44, He says, How can you believe when you receive glory from one another and you do not seek the glory that is from the one and only God? But Jesus shows us one of the reasons why many people reject him. He said, you are seeking the glory of men. You are more interested about what people think of you than about what God thinks of you. When you make choices, you won't make choices for truth. You make choices rather for the smile of friends or the community of, or people around you. You seek the glory of men more than the glory of God. That's why they rejected Christ in the end as well. He says another thing. He says, I won't accuse you. One day before the Father, he said, I won't accuse you. He said, the one that will accuse you is Moses. And that must have been a shock to the Jews. <laughs> when they heard that Jesus said, one day, it's not I that are going to accuse you in his argument with his people. He said, there's another one and it's Moses. He will accuse you one day before the Father. And they were shocked. They had their hope on Moses. But Jesus said, Moses spoke about me. And because he spoke about me, you don't want to listen. We have got the Bible. The Holy Spirit brought the Bible into being for many writers. Some don't read it anymore. Maybe it's full of dust. We read in the Bible the story of a rich man and Lazarus. And the rich man, not because he was rich, that I cannot go into the story, it's not because of that. But he was lost and he was in hell. And he said to Abram, Father, I beg you that you send someone to my father's house. There are five brothers. That, that you would send someone to warn them not to come to this place. It's terrible here. Maybe we don't believe in that anymore, but the Bible is clear about that. He said, let someone go out. And Abraham said, no. They have Moses and the prophets. <laughs> let them hear them. They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to the Bible. They have the Bible. Let them read the Bible. And he said, no, Father, Abraham. But if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. If I see someone standing up from the dead and speak to them, they will live. And Abraham said, no. If they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be persuaded, even if someone rises from the dead. What a judgment. We have the Bible. We have God's Word. And Abraham is, is telling them, read the Bible. Study it under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible shows you and directs us to one person. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. To find in Him that He is indeed the bread of life. But the Bible shows us to Christ that if you are thirsty, He can help you with that thirst. When you are seeking for forgiveness of sins, He is the one that died for us. If you are looking for peace, He's the one that can give you that peace. The Bible shows us towards Christ. 
And he says, there's witnesses. John the Baptist. His works. What he did. The Father and the Scripture. Today we have everything. And upon that all, we have the Holy Spirit that came to testify about Christ. But the question is, do we believe this testimonies? Has the testimonies of the Bible and the Holy Spirit ever made an impact on your and my life? That it show us and direct us to Christ to be our Savior. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the Holy Spirit who came to testify about Jesus. We live in a world where there is such a lack of peace generally and in people's lives. But your word said you came to give us that peace through salvation. You are the promise of the Father. You can give us that living water that can become in us a well of living water that will spring up until eternal life. Oh Lord, help us to hear your voice to experience the power of the working of the Holy Spirit. Because this morning we once more see that the letter killeth, but the Spirit gives life. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.